The Philippine Nurses Association of Nevada now brings you Philippine Nars, news and features about the Filipino-American nursing community and beyond. And now, here's your host, Doris Bauer. Well, good evening, Philippine Nars listeners and followers. Thank you for joining us today. Well, Valentine's Day is just around the corner, so let me be one of the first ones to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. I hope that you get all the flowers and the chocolates that you deserve from your Valentines. So happy Valentine's Day, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Well, February is certainly a very busy month for celebrations and uh, raising community awareness. And more importantly, February is Black History Month. So today at Philippine NARS, we have invited three lovely ladies who can talk to us about Black History Month and some healthcare challenges of the African American community. Please welcome from the Southern Nevada Black Nurses Association, Ms. Lauren Edgar, Dr. Tracy Glover, and Ms. Terry Yates. Welcome, ladies. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad you joined us today. Well, I'm going to let you introduce yourselves a little bit. Just say a little bit something more about yourself. I know uh, here's Miss Lauren Edgar, who is the president of the SNBNA. Lauren? Thank you, Doris. So happy to be here. Uh, yes, my name is Lauren Edgar. I am a registered nurse of 13 years, uh, having practiced for all of it. Most of my practice has been in uh, the Las Vegas Valley. Um, I've been the president of the Southern Nevada Black Nurse Association for four years now. Uh, we've been uh, very busy at work. Um, mm -hmm. Very happy to be a part of the profession here in the Valley. Awesome, awesome. And of course, we have the vice president of the association and also an assistant professor at Tour University. Please welcome Dr. Tracy Johnson Glover. Hi, um, thank you again, Doris, for inviting us. Um, I have been a nurse for about 15 years, um, primarily in the um, neonatal ICU area. Uh -huh. I have been teaching at Toro for the last five years, and um, I just completed my doctorate in transcultural nursing, wow. and I'm happy to be here. All right. We're happy you could join us, Dr. Tracy. <laughs> Thank okay. you. And last but not least is, well, I've known this gal for a long time. <laughs> we used to work together. She is the current treasurer of uh, the association. Please welcome Ms. Terry Yates. Thank you, Doris. I'm glad that we were finally able to get here and do this with uh -huh. you. I have been an RN for 38 years. I've practiced wow. in Columbus, Ohio, from where I was born. And now I practice here in Las Vegas as an infusion nurse. All right. Well, welcome, ladies. Okay. So let's get started and feel free. I know you've, uh, you have you feel free to answer these questions that I'm going to shoot at you. Okay. So how did Black History Month come about and why February? Okay, the idea of back Black History Month originated in 1926. Mm -hmm. A gentleman who was a historic historian and an author, Carter G. Woodson, in 1926, the time to recognize Black history, he started off with saying the second week of February would be known as Negro History Week. Mm -hmm. And the reason they picked February was because it concurred with the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. Both of these historic figures fought against slavery, so it seemed a logical date, date. to recognize no. African American history. Great. Wow, I did not know that. Uh, we're going to be learning a lot today. So, okay. So, uh, maybe I can ask you all these questions. What does Black History Month mean to you? Black History Month is important because even though it is the shortest month of the year, it gives us time to reflect on the struggles that African Americans have went through, along with the success mm -hmm. that we have accomplished over the centuries and we can learn a lot in black history month like how many people knew that harriet tugman actually was a nurse mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I learned that today. She may not have went to true nursing school, but she was a nurse and helped out people in the Civil War. Wow. I did not know that either. Yeah. Wow. Um, what about you, uh, Dr. Tracy? What does uh, this month mean to you? Um, for me, I am... Like Terry said, it gives us an opportunity to reflect, but I think it also gives us an opportunity to share our history, um, like the new things that you're learning. Um, These are some of the things that we don't learn in school, Mm -hmm. um, that we don't learn anywhere, really. um, But in platforms like this where we can share. Um, And then also in February, because it is dedicated to um, African-American history, we see um, different programs on that give people an opportunity to learn about our past and our current um, um, prominent figures um, that have done very good things in our community. So I think it does a lot, Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. good. And uh, Miss Miss Lauren, what do you have to uh, say to that question? Um, I definitely think, especially um, now, I think it uh, it creates opportunities to help um, those among the African American community revisit where we came from, revisit where we have grown, mm-hmm. and continue to reflect on opportunities where we need to continue to um, embrace where we need to have a place both Mm -hmm. in our own communities as well as um, communities outside of our race. Um, It really is an opportunity to reflect on some of the celebratory um, uh, occurrences that have come about in past years and distant years and as well as in recent years. Um, Black History Month is oftentimes thought of as, oh, okay, it's all about Martin Luther King Jr. um, and a few others, when really there is a a, a plethora Mm -hmm. of African-American heroes uh, that contributed to really how what our world looks like today and um and it helps to contribute to recognizing what new talent coming from future generations with our up and coming generations right, right. Uh, what new talents coming about that will continue to contribute to to civilization right well thank you ladies for that one other thing um mm-hmm. black history month is not only celebrated in the united states yes in 19 19- 87, the United Kingdom started mm-hmm. celebrating Black History Month. And Canada started celebrating it in 1995. And Ireland has started spreading it in 2010. Wow. Now, U.S. and Canada celebrated in February, but the European countries celebrated in October. Oh, wow. okay. All right. Well, yeah, I was kind of looking up, you know, a history of this, and I was, I guess I, I was surprised of uh, the, uh, that, that Black History Month was celebrated in other uh, countries besides us. So that's really good. That's really, really good. Um, so um, I looked this up, too, and they said that the theme of uh, Black History Month for 2021 is the Black Family representation, identity, and diversity. Now, can you comment on that? Who wants to take that on? I'll start. Um, I come from a uh, a single um, parent home. Mm -hmm. Um, I come from what could perhaps be uh, seen most often among African-American families. Um, I was raised by a single mother, absent father. Um, So I think uh, when it comes to representation of the black family, it's oftentimes maybe seen as that, oftentimes Mm -hmm. seen as the um, African-American or the the father oftentimes missing. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think that what is important uh, for us to recognize is what or what um, what families are still out there that have both parents in the home. And I think even still, we still have opportunities to show both the mother and the father in the home. Uh, we don't see that necessarily um, as often as we'd like in advertisements, um, in uh, printed ads, um, mm-hmm. commercials, um, even uh, motion pictures. So I think that this year will be a very important year to bring about uh, uh, positivity um, that comes yeah. with the Black family mm-hmm. and how, um, and, and really definitely how diverse it can truly get mm-hmm. uh, with blended families and so forth. Mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. good. Okay. Anyone wants to add to that? We're good. 
I will add something to it. Okay. I was I was one of the lucky ones. I grew up in the typical family where there was a mother, father present, you know, 24-7. They instilled in us the importance of education. I'm mm-hmm. the first college graduate in my family. Wow, Terry. Matter of fact, um, mm-hmm. as a child, I was at my father's high school graduation. So even though he made sure it was important enough to go back and get educated, make sure that we went to college, and my brother has went to college too, and he's an electronic engineer for the government. So it was very important, and it's important to me now to pass it on to the next generation and say, hey, you can do whatever you want to. I don't have children, but... I pass it on to the younger generation and push them along to say, hey, you can do better. Mm -hmm. You need to, you know, without education, you can't do anything. Yeah, that is very, very true. You know, my father told me when I was very young, I said, he said to me, and this words really stuck, you know, with me. He said, I am a poor man. I cannot give you any wealth or anything, but what I can do is have you get an education. Mm -hmm. And I really, really, that really stuck, you know, with me. And so for that, I do appreciate what you said, Terry. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay. So, um, well, the African-American community has some uh, major health issues that are out there. Can you name some of these issues and why are these uh, the most... uh, well, higher health issues, I should say, you know, in the African-American community? Well, I can answer that. I think that, um, well, according to the Office of Minority Health, um, compared Mm -hmm. to their white counterparts, African-Americans are generally at higher risk for heart disease, for Mm -hmm. stroke, cancer, asthma, influenza, um, pneumonia, diabetes, HIV, AIDS, we're mm. kind of at a disadvantage um, for a lot of um, health risk. However, the two that I'll discuss just a little bit further is that um, some of the statistics are that African Americans aged 35 to 64 are 50% more likely to have blood pressure, high blood pressure. Mm-hmm than those that are white. And those aged between 18 and 49 are two times likely to die from heart disease than Mm -hmm. whites. Mm -hmm. Um, So those are some really um, damaging statistics for the African-American community. Mm -hmm. Um, And then in diabetes, it's more common in 10% of blacks compared to ages 35 to 49 compared to 6% of whites. And so these health issues or these health disparities Mm -hmm. exist mainly, um, you know, if we review the social determinants of health, Um, Mm -hmm. we have economic stability, access to health care, access to affordable, healthy foods, environmental issues and discrimination. And those are kind of a few of the reasons as to why we have these health disparities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, to, talking about uh, disparities, it's also well known that there are a lot of uh, health disparities affecting the African American community. Can you name these disparities and what is being done about this? Well, I, I mentioned some of the disparities, you know, with yeah. um, health, um, um, hypertension right. and diabetes. Um, but what's being done about it is um, one of the most important things, I think, is the Affordable Care Act, where mm-hmm. um, it gave African-Americans um, access to health care. However, the downside is you can have the insurance, but if you don't have adequate transportation Mm -hmm. or if you Mm -hmm. earn a minimum wage and can't take days off to get to the doctor's office, then you're at a disadvantage also. So a lot of times those social determinants, you know, if you, especially poverty, if you have one of them or two of them, one gain may not necessarily be such a um, a benefit to you if mm-hmm. you don't have access to other things to take advantage of them. Um, mm-hmm. If you have insurance, but you don't have a ride to get to the hospital right. or you don't have adequate transportation, as I said, it becomes an issue. 
Um, some of the positive things about poverty is that there are some conversations in Washington right now about increasing the minimum wage, which could be an avenue mm -hmm. to um, improve economic stability, mm -hmm. um, which could definitely help poverty. And then I think um, another important um, issue that we kind of alluded to in, in Black, Black History Month is that um, with the civil unrest in our country over mm -hmm. the last year, we're having more conversations mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that are being held to discuss systemic racism and discrimination. Right. And so having those conversations are also a solution to some of the social determinants and health disparities that we have. Right. That's and, uh, Go ahead. Yeah. No, thank you, Doris. And um, definitely um, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Johnson Glover. I think that um, two, to add to your point, a lot of it is the African American community's attitude and trust towards the healthcare community. Mm -hmm. um, even with the access, even with all the cards in place, mm -hmm. if the person themselves do not have trust in the environment, the healthcare environment, mm -hmm. the healthcare services Absolutely. that's available in their community, starting from anywhere from primary care all the way to acute care settings. Um, and really just buy in about what they're learning about their body. It, um, right. it, it also plays a factor as well. Um, and I'm sure we'll get into it later, but there's definitely yeah. history that affects and that influences the um, African-American population's decision on how engaged they are in healthcare and Correct. who they actually trust. Mm -hmm. So a yeah. lot of that um, also goes into uh, the attitude of the person, the culture of the community that they live in, um, and really uh, what those, uh, some of those other social factors, those peer, mm -hmm. um, it, it, those influential fact factors that come. The family, from the, the family, family um, right, has an influence right. on that. Absolutely. If you, if your parents or grandparents have issues with the healthcare system or um, with trust in the healthcare system, then it'll be passed on as well. Absolutely. And, and that can really influence as, uh, you know, children of young age, uh, not to say right. neglect necessarily, but again, that buy-in starts, you know, with the parents and Correct. how they perceive healthcare effects, even how their <clears throat> children are received, per, perhaps receive healthcare, how engaged are they to go to the dentist appointments, not just going to mm -hmm. doctor's appointments, how engaged they are, are they in home practices and so forth. Um, so there's a lot that goes on. Um, um, yeah. but I think, uh, I think we're um, on the upswing. Yeah. yeah, part of yeah. it. There's also part of it is uh, we don't have control over genetics. True, and a lot of it is genetics, like um, for diabetes, African Americans are more prone to be insulin resistant the day that we are born, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then the way that we eat. Unfortunately, that comes from our ancestors. You know, we we learn from them how to cook what foods were available. And a lot of the times it wasn't the healthiest foods, mm -hmm. you know, to make a pound cake, you put a pound of butter in it. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't always the healthiest. <laughs> it wasn't always the healthiest sure. stuff. It's good though. <laughs> it may be good, but it may not be the healthiest. Pound of flour. Right. So part of that, and then also when you go back and look at the distrust, you have to see how we were treated as slaves that we were used as experiments mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. some people like with the vaccination coming out right now and i know we're going to talk mm -hmm. about covid mm -hmm. all i hear is well tuskegee okay tuskegee was years and years, years and ago. years ago right we have to go beyond that because when you look at who helped develop this vaccination it was an african-american female mm. so you know <clears throat> we have to get into these studies so that the drugs and stuff that they are making are effective for us mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because like every cancer patient you can't treat every cancer patient the same correct because when it comes to cancer like breast cancer i'm a two-time breast cancer survivor but when you look at it her positive and triple negative are more prone in the african-american community why is that if we don't get in the studies and find that out and get over this distrust of the medical profession, we're never going to right. find a cure for these diseases and we're going to continue to die. 
Yeah, and, and this is why we have we, our association, Filipino Association, this is why we continue to do this podcast is to raise awareness, you know, uh, of the different health issues and such as, you know, you, you guys in your community and in our community. So education is such a big key to everything, <laughs> I think. Mm-hmm. So we have a lot of work to do as nurses, don't we? <laughs> yes. Always. Yes. Always. Absolutely. Right, right. Yes. Okay, so let, let, let's let talk COVID. Um, this has been crazy. I wish this thing would end like right now. Mm-hmm. But uh, <clears throat> it's very, it's, it's just yesterday, uh, it, it just took me, I mean, we had notifications of three patients who just passed. And I, at the end of the day, I was like, oh, God. Anyway, um, do you have any statistics on uh, the number of African Americans affected with COVID? And um, even here in our community, uh, or in, in um, what was I going to say? What are the challenges in getting tested or in getting vaccinated in the community? Um, I can start with some of the, the nationwide statistics. Sure. Um, and really how they can be narrowed down is by, um, you know, we, we're talking about cases of COVID, then we'll mm-hmm. bring it to hospitalizations in the acute care setting, and then we'll talk about deaths. But um, this is the the statistics I'll quote are uh, from the CDC website, and a lot of it is simply um, compared to those who are white or um, and perhaps non-Hispanic. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, amongst the African American community, we've already come across 1.4 million cases, and wow. hospitalizations we're looking at 3.7 million. Um, unfortunately, we've got 2.8 times higher than those who are white and non-Hispanic. We're 2.8 times times higher than we are um, amongst the African-American community in terms of deaths Mm -hmm. um, in comparison to the white and uh, and Mm -hmm. non-Hispanic. So it's definitely some of the higher numbers compared to um, even those who are um, of other colored um, uh, or, or other um, counterparts among the mm-hmm. colored population. Right. Um, and this includes African or excuse me, um, American Indian. This includes um, Asian and Hispanic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so really the, the numbers perhaps speak for themselves. And again, I think what really sticks out to me are not necessarily the cases, but really the hospitalizations. And mm-hmm. to answer your question about that buy-in, how long are, yeah. are, are the African American community, how long are we waiting to go to the hospital, um, you know, and, and is it a matter of transportation? Is it a matter of that buy-in? Um, are, are we truly fearing the healthcare system so much mm-hmm. that we would rather stay at home and just work it out ourselves? Right. With home remedies that came from generations before us mm-hmm. rather than go to the hospital and seek the care that we truly need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, or being, or, or, or being, having the fear that they're going to be turned away. Mm-hmm. Um, there, yeah. there have been quite a few cases where, you know, um, and, and not just with COVID, but with, um, illnesses not taken seriously, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, especially sickle cell disease mm-hmm. where, um, yes. a per, which is, you know, prominent in the African-American community when they go to the emergency room and they are being told, you know, or not given the appropriate medications to um, harness their pain um, because they don't believe that they're in pain or they don't believe their, the severity is, is as high as they say it is. They're drug seeking. Um, And so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because of that, patients with sickle cell usually wait to the last minute to go. Um, to the hospital because they feel that they're not going to be taken seriously right. and they're going to be rejected. And so, and that's a real problem. I know we're talking about COVID, but sometimes the same reasons for not um, going to the hospital and waiting too late to go uh-huh. um, mm-hmm. is because of, it could be because of discrimination and being not, not taken right. seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some of the other challenges are, you know, again, access to health care mm-hmm. and poverty. You know, um, those two go hand in hand. And um, those are those are real challenges for people. Um, And, um, you know, what I didn't discuss earlier was that um, these numbers may be higher because of the 
um, employment that we have. We're frontline mm-hmm. workers, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. African-Americans, a lot of times are frontline workers. And so, uh-huh. which means that they have more exposure, right? They right. have more exposure, I which think, could be another reason that the numbers are so high. Yeah. I think that's the same thing in the uh, Filipino community as well. Um, you know, with regards to exposure and being healthcare workers. Oh, okay. So, um, well, like you were saying, uh, African Americans have uh, some history regarding healthcare and clinical trials in this country. And can you explain how this has affected how they view the vaccine for COVID? Um, they don't trust it. it yeah. The simple, the, simple fact is they do not trust it. They're yeah. sitting up here saying, okay, the government threw something together real quick. Um, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to wait for uh, the summer and see what happens mm-hmm, to you mm-hmm. who took the vaccination because I simply just don't trust it. Or I, I've also heard the things, well, I'm going to roll the dice and hope for the best. I've heard that, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I guess not only in your community, right. but ours as well. <laughs> OK. You have anything to add to that, uh, Lauren or uh, Dr. Tracy? Uh, no, I think I think Terry's uh, spot on. Yeah. Um, I uh, run uh, my in my work um, as clinical educator and uh, nurse administrator uh, for one of the largest hospitals here in the valley. Mm-hmm. I am. A, I talk to a lot of people, and I'm over the COVID clinic and and run the operations there. And I approach people and say, "Hey, especially when we have extra vaccinations, I say, um, you know, hey, would you like the vaccination?" And several, if not almost all of mm-hmm. the, all of the African American um, individuals that I've approached, both coworker um, uh, as well as maybe perhaps our contractors. Uh, they are very hesitant, very mm-hmm. hesitant. And it's a very hard no that I receive from them. It's mm. not so much, oh, I'm still thinking about it. It's still yeah. a very hard no, yeah. uh, which mm-hmm. validates in my mind that there's still a lot of work to be done to help um, help at least educate to the process of how vaccinations, especially right. the COVID-19 uh, vaccination um, comes about um, and really just it, it's I think it's a lot of it there's a, a big need for transparency mm-hmm. and right now just because of civil unrest a lot of the uh, the climate that our country is in there's a lot of conspiracy thought about conspiracy and really just people are just coming up with conclusions right. uh, in their own mind especially with the whole quarantine uh, really are people are left with searching the World Wide Web to get mm-hmm. information, right? And you know, it. I'm not sure how many of them have the uh, the wherewithal and the know-how to know what resources are can truly be considered their source of truth, right? To help right. make that decision, or is it Facebook, mm-hmm. uh, or is it social media, or is it just simply family members that they're talking to over the phone or over FaceTime? That says, right, right. You know, you know, no. This is what this is what I heard. This is what happened right. with someone else. Um, so it's it's a very hard no with a lot of yeah. the individuals that I approach. Yeah, it's just it's just a bad flu. You know, I can get uh-huh. over the flu. It's just right. a bad flu. Well, yeah. I've heard I think- that uh, with not only not only the lay people, but even healthcare workers. Yes. Even healthcare exactly. workers. I'm just really surprised why they. You know, uh, it's hard to, for them to follow the science. But yeah, you know, then again, you were saying, it- Dr. Tracy. Well, yeah, I'm also (laughs) thinking, you know, because of some of the damaging um, um, studies that were done with um, Mm African-Americans in the past, um, I know Terry alluded to, you know, it's something that we do need to get over. Uh um, But for some of them, it's really hard. And even with the institution of the IRB, the Institutional Review Board, Mm -hmm. Um, that's responsible for monitoring unethical treatment of humans. African-Americans, they still have long-lasting attitudes and deep-rooted feelings Mm -hmm. about clinical trials and vaccines. But the good news, and this is going to contradict a little bit of what Lauren said, but Mm -hmm. the good news is since the vaccine has been distributed, um, I've personally seen... um, really good reception of black people getting the COVID vaccine. Now, again, these are, Mm -hmm. um, 
older members of the community mm-hmm. that are doing it, um, which um, surprised me a little bit. But they they're on board. Um, my my dad got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. I still have to get my husband vaccinated. I got yeah, my first one, but <laughs> he's eighty years old and he got it. <laughs> um, oh, all right for him. I think I think um, black nurses especially have the mission and Mm -hmm. the, um, um, the, the goals to help our community get on board. I think that's, that's kind of our, our, you know, that's what we're charged with and that's what we need to do because we know the science, we know, Mm -hmm. um, um, the validity of the vaccine. And so Mm -hmm. we need to be out there and promoting it and giving the good information. Exactly. Exactly. We know don't listen to the politics, listen (laughs) to the scientists. Correct. Correct. I wish that we could get Fauci over here. (laughs) I mean, I, I actually was on, I was actually on the fence about getting it. Uh-huh. And then I did listen to a broadcast that Dr. Fauci did with mm-hmm. the black doctors mm-hmm. and he explained it so well. I'm sitting up here like, well, I can't tell other people to go get it and I don't get it myself. So I've gotten my first shot. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting to get my second one. My mother, who is 88, has mm-hmm. gotten her first shot. She's getting her second one on Saturday. So, you know, I can't walk the walk if I don't, you know, talk yeah, the talk. Yeah, talk the know, talk. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> well, great. That's good. Well, ladies, that was some good discussion on uh, African-American health and disparities on Black History Month. But um, let's talk about your organization, the Southern Nevada Black Nurses Association. What is your mission? What is SNBNA all about? Well, I'll take that one. Um, Mainly (laughs) our our biggest mission is to ensure that we investigate, define, and truly determine the healthcare need of black Americans and in Las Vegas and implement, or I should say Southern Nevada, and um, and really implement the change that needs to be made Mm -hmm. um, to help um, African Americans become more uh, available to the services that are uh, that exist in the Southern Nevada um, area or in the Las Vegas Valley, mm-hmm. but also ensure that on the other side, uh, we are advocating for other minorities and making sure that we all take opportunities to uh, make sure we're, we have a seat at the table to help right. um, decisions around <laughs> healthcare policy and um, and other um, and other aspects of healthcare to ensure that the um, agenda, the healthcare agenda for the city, does include the. Um, the best interest of the African American individual in mm-hmm. the Southern Nevada um, uh, 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 area, um, and really, I think that when that happens, we'll be able to see um, a, a true growth and true um, true progress within the city as a whole. Yeah, that's that's great. That's great. So, what are some of the um, major organizations that you are involved with? Oh gosh. Okay. So since the last year, <laughs> yeah. since the last year, um, it's a long list, Lauren. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we have uh, had the pleasure of working with your organization for thank sure. You. Yes, uh, yes. Thank you for having us. Um, uh, we also, over the past few few years, have um, had a lot of involvement with the um, uh, Nevada Action Coalition. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've also had a lot of involvement on a worldwide or a nationwide scale uh, with our na- national body, the National Black Nurse Association. Mm-hmm. Um, we've also had the opportunity to really dive into some of those perhaps um, those uh, newer areas where uh, there is a lot of, uh, there's a big need for African-American representation. And that has a lot to do within the last year or so with, um, with genetics. Mm-hmm. We are involved uh, with ISONG, the um, ISONG organization, mm-hmm. which is the um, International Society of um, Nurses in Genetics, in Genomics. Mm-hmm. Um, we've also uh, been partnering with Harvard uh, Pilgrim uh, Medical School and we've also had the opportunity to now just recently um, partner with the National Library of Medicine as well as uh, Pfizer. So, um, nice. which is, you know, yeah. the vaccine. So, um, uh, and this doesn't uh, just include those national organizations. We definitely look to partner with our sister organizations, um, mm-hmm. the uh, Black Nurses Rock, um, 
as well as the um the sorority the, 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 the sororities that's mm -hmm. the one yeah yes. exactly yes. so a lot of it um okay. making sure that we have a, a local partnerships uh, that we really try to stay engaged with but also try to expand as much as we can on a national scale uh, to ensure uh, that we learn all we can so that we can understand what to bring to the community. Right. And we've also branched out to some mentorship um, with the mm -hmm. Tulips organization, and mm -hmm. we're looking for um, more, more um, activities with them as well. That's great. Yeah, we uh, created a, some kind of a mentorship as well. So I'm so glad. That's great. Yeah. That's wonderful. We also make a point that we make sure that we give out scholarships uh -huh. for Yes. People, for young people for to young be able people. to become nurses because a lot of us are baby boomers and mm -hmm. we are going to be leaving the profession and mm -hmm. there is not the generation behind us to follow us. I so agree. there is going to be already a nursing shortage. And then with COVID, we lost some nurses and some nurses mm -hmm. left the profession mm -hmm. and baby boomers. Once we retire, there's nobody following behind us. So it's very important that we give out scholarships to help the people with financial right. needs to be able to go to college. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you there. Uh, I, I've always pictured myself like I want to retire, but here I'm on a wheelchair. I'm like, well, I'm going to take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a nurse. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of 70-year-old nurses still out there working. I'm not quite there yet. Terry. Yeah, I know, I know. But they're, they're out there. And, they, you know, in a, any other field, they would have retired. Uh -huh. But because they're nurses, because they care, because yeah. they know there's a shortage, exactly. they're still at the bedside. Yeah, 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 and and a Great lot point. of them came out of retirement with this pandemic, actually. Yes, yes. Uh, and gave their all. So that's great. Okay, so are, are, do you have any community projects that you are involved with? Oh my gosh! So we are <laughs> <Here's one. laughs> definitely take, maximizing. We we have probably looked to provide more webinars than we were even perhaps ready for. Uh -huh. We're very excited about it. Um, we uh, are really maximizing on the virtual platform uh, mm -hmm. that's available that came with COVID. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, that what makes me excited about it is that we're able to expand um, and really uh, create a. Um, a large opportunity for outreach. Uh, mm -hmm. We have presented uh, local um, webinars um, as well, as, or webinars for uh, local bodies as well as on the national scale, which mm -hmm. is um, mm -hmm. really, uh, really exciting uh, just because it, again, it helps us to get an idea on really what conversations we need to have uh, currently with members of our community um, COVID's really changed a lot. I think it's really changed the dynamic of how sure uh, the African American sees healthcare. And I think there's, and I think while you know some people can see it as uh, you know a turning point on the on the negative side, I think you know in that um, arena, in that storm, if you will, there's opportunity for uh, people to change perspective. And you know people are home and they want to talk to um, the outside world. They want mm -hmm. to talk to nurses. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of opportunity now that we're looking to embrace, especially for 2021 to really reach out to, um, <clears throat> our, our colleagues out yeah. there yeah. and mm -hmm. get their attention. Let's start talking about what, what truly needs to be talked about mm -hmm. so we can really move forward as best we can. Um, cause I think I, I almost feel like we have a very small window of opportunity where, mm -hmm. you know, we've got black lives matter. We've got all of this attention around the African American community supporting small, um, supporting small businesses. Small as well businesses, as black businesses. Right. Mm -hmm. And I almost feel like I want to maximize on this window that we have to ensure that the right conversations are had. And so, um, a lot of community involvement will, uh, be conducted in 2021. Well, send us a link on those I, webinars. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, um, um, just to piggyback on what Lauren just spoke about is, you know, the Zoom platform the and, and all of the other virtual platforms that are available now has made access a whole lot easier. Um, and so, like Lauren said, you know, utilizing this small window that we have mm -hmm. to reach as many as we can mm -hmm. um, is, is going to be a great thing. And I'm hoping that um, we can, you know, utilize these platforms 
more and more because it makes our access so much better. You know, we can reach people in New York to, you know, exactly. help us with a virtual um, and we don't have to fly them in. Right, you know, right. we can have this type of a platform. So um, I just I just think I, I'm really loving it right now. And um, hopefully it will continue. Hopefully it will. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think also telemed is going to stay around. And because we have telemed Mm -hmm. now, Mm -hmm. people who can't get to the doctor, they don't have transportation. Everybody everybody has a cell phone. Yeah, everybody has a cell phone. So they can get on there. They can talk to a nurse. They can talk to a doctor. They don't have to wait to the last minute. Correct. Right. While you are in your pajamas, too. Yes. <laughs> we never we never thought when we watched the Jetsons yes. years ago that we were going to be yes. able to talk to a doctor exactly. on a yes. computer. Everything right. with the Jetsons, except for the flying cars, uh-huh. yep. has come to reality. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Anyway, okay, so the COVID pandemic has affected many nurses uh, in many ways, especially from a mental health standpoint. Do you think our government can be of more help with this problem? And how so? I think they can because they need to get more mental health services. These nurses are watching people die. Mm -hmm. Not one, not two. I have a nurse, a friend in ICU. He said they had five people die in a 12-hour period. I mean, when you have that day after day after day it is going to wear on On anybody Mm -hmm. and then when you hear that you know oh somebody had uh died they went to a funeral guess what that funeral was a super spreader and six more family members died Mm. i mean it's hitting it's hitting them in their pockets yeah people are not financially be able they're not being able to sit by the bedside to hold a family member's friend uh hand while they're dying that goes to the nurse so mm. the nurse has to sit there and okay yeah. i gotta hold this person's hand and watch them die then i gotta go to the next room and do the same thing over and over and over again they even put out a report and you know alcoholism is going up Mm. Yeah. And because of alcohol use is going up, you're getting more liver disease. More liver disease means you're more prone to colds. And people can't go home and hug their kids. I know. I mean, how many oh, people haven't had a terrible. hug in nine months? I mean, virtual will, hugs are not the same. Virtual <laughs> hugs are not the same. No. <laughs> so we need to do better on mental health, That's simply true. getting people to talk Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. nurses are not known to talk and express their feelings because we're not supposed to you know but we got to be you know if you see a nurse down and say hey sounds like you're not feeling the greatest today can we talk Mm -hmm. can we take Mm -hmm. five minutes and talk and you know you express your feelings if it means that you got to yell you got to cry you got to do whatever we have to be able to do that among ourselves correct yes because we don't have the family members to go back to to be able to do that because our families Mm -hmm. are not understanding what do you mean oh okay somebody died today no five people died today Mm-hmm. in one shift mm-hmm. and as soon as that bed was empty there was another person in it yeah. you know it's very hard yeah yeah and i agree with you terry um i think that you know with 2020 uh being the year of the nurse i think a lot of what national organizations were trying to uh, message is you know nurses we need to embrace resilience and i think that it, it, we have to be careful with that word because it almost gives the impression as if, if you don't truly study the word, it gives the impression that you are supposed to just get through and, you know, just be that, it gives you almost the sense like you're supposed to be that tough person. You know, be human human strength. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like be resilient. And it's Mm -hmm. like, you know, I think given what exactly what Terry's talking about, you know, I think that resiliency has to be defined in the world of the nurse, um, especially in the world of the nurse working on COVID units, um, mm-hmm. seeing five people die a day, um, you know, or in a shift. Um, I think that that has to be truly defined to say resiliency means embracing the, you know, the resources that are available to you, perhaps through your organization Correct. or, you know, through your family or even to any other outside resources. So resiliency mm-hmm. doesn't mean make it up, figure it all out by yourself. Yeah. Um, resiliency means embracing some of those opportunities that are out there to help you get through. 
resiliency doesn't mean figure it out and work it out in your own head to get through the, get through every day. Yeah, as nurses, we're used to taking care of everybody else. We don't know how to take care, take care of, ourselves. of ourselves. Right. And we have to it's learn almost, how to take care of ourselves. It's almost like that saying with men, you know, um, strong men don't cry, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, nurses, nurses are not superheroes. I mean, well, and in yes, we, we are, yes. but <laughs> really in mm-hmm. real life, we have real feelings, real emotions mm-hmm. and real, you know, um, um, things going on or, or all of these things are taking a toll on us. Correct. And so there has to be some relief somewhere. Mm-hmm. And right now with, you know, we look at super spreader events and we look at, you know, um, all these events where people are out and they're not wearing a mask and they're, they're, mm-hmm. you know, going yes. against all of the rules. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like a, okay. a, um, Slapping the, this is a slap in the face, right. you, know, you know, because we're we're looking at this and we're like, don't you understand? Yeah, you know, this, you're going to be coming to see me, <laughs> you know. Exactly. So yeah, it's hard. Uh, it's hard. Yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. very difficult. We need to engage our politicians on this one, too. So, um, anyways, uh, what is um, your message to the public regarding pub, uh, Black History Month? Learn the history. I mean, black history is not taught in schools, but you'll be surprised. Just me researching some of the stuff for this podcast, I learned a lot. We've been researching black nurses every day this month, and that's how I found out Harriet Tugman was a nurse. Never knew that. Amazing, yeah, yeah. Um, Anything to add to that, Uh, Lauren or Dr. Yeah, Clark? yeah. Um, I think that uh, my message is that know that Black History Month um, definitely can be embraced um, in, in, in great ways in the month of February. Um, but I think that, you know, given what our country has seen, uh, given the climate that we're in, um, embrace opportunities to educate yourself outside of Black History Month. Embrace, uh, keep it going. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and bring it to your children, um, making sure that it's not simply um, what is uh, shared in their in their textbooks, but embrace what what else is out there. Um, and if there's help needed regarding um, finding out where those sources of truth are to make sure that information is accurate mm-hmm. and true, um, yeah, they're definitely out there. Um, and AACP, um, even the National Black Nurse Association, there's a lot of great um, organizations mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. can be seen as the source of truth that helps to uh, ensure that that information is shared um, in, 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 in full accuracy. And, uh, and there's fun ways to share it with your children. There's fun ways to talk about it at, uh, at, at your dinner table. Um, if, even if you are not a member of the African-American community, there's fun ways mm-hmm. to embrace uh, food exactly. um, that is often mm-hmm. circulated mm-hmm. at uh, family gatherings within mm-hmm. the African-American community. Everybody loves dessert. Mm-hmm. There's wonderful desserts that we like to make. Make it a, pick a Saturday every month and make it yes. a dessert. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I just found out recently through another webinar <laughs> um, <laughs> that um, in Las Vegas um, there one there is a bill or so, um, something in the government that's up um, regarding including Black history in the schools. Oh, great! However, parents oh, were given a choice as to whether we could we should have it or not. And there were many that voted against it. Mm, And um, there was some conversation in that webinar as to why they would go against this. This is a part of American history. Mm -hmm. It is not something foreign. It is American history. And um, I, I think that sometimes people look at the negative aspects of Black history and other cultures or races may feel that we are targeting them or putting them in a bad light. And so they don't Mm. want their children to hear that. Mm. And, you know, as an example, slavery, you know, we African-Americans were here and we were brought here as slaves. And there were white people that 
enslaved us. And so that puts them in a negative light. But we're not looking, when we're going over history, we're not looking for to put anyone in a bad light. We're mm-hmm. looking for the truth. Correct. We just want mm-hmm. the truth to be shared. Whether, you know, you shouldn't feel bad about it. You know, if your ancestors did it, oh well. Um, we just Learn want from the it, truth out right? there. And we want the yeah. whole truth. If okay. we look at Native Americans, mm-hmm. the same is true for them. Yeah. We just want the truth out there so that we don't look like um, that we did something wrong, Mm -hmm. you know, that 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 Native Americans did something wrong. You know, why are we why do we have these health disparities now? Mm -hmm. We have them now because of our history. And if more Mm -hmm. people understand that history and and take the blame and all of that out of it, we'll Mm -hmm. get somewhere. We'll get somewhere. Very mm-hmm. good. Very good. Yeah. And I, I you know, um, Dr. Justin Glover, I think you are spot on because, you know, as you, you all know, so my household is a mixed household. Uh, my husband is um, is Caucasian, me being African-American. It's very, um, I think it's very important to help, uh, especially when there's more and more uh, mixed children out there. They need mm-hmm. to all, they need to understand when it comes to making sure that there is um, accurate black um, cur- African-American curricula in the mm-hmm. schools, um, it helps them to see even both sides, at least for my, my children, it's important for them to see both sides, the positive sides of um, their father's side, um, their father's history, as well as the positive side of their mother's history, mm-hmm. but also uh, not be afraid to talk about the negative side and understand that, you know, we all, we as Americans always can grow through our strengths, mm-hmm. but it's important that we can't grow as, as best we can without knowing the truth. And that right. truth includes both the bad parts and the good and parts. The good parts. Sure, you know, it right. wasn't, you know, right. your grandma mm-hmm. and grandpa, you know, on daddy's side that did that. Maybe perhaps it could have been their ancestors. But again, you know, there's uh, still, as we grow as Americans, there's still a lot of wonderful representation mm-hmm. on both sides. Um, but I think right. it's important and it's important, at least for my husband and I, you know, we feel it's important to share, you know, and have those very um, uh candid conversations with our children to say this did exist right, um, right and and help them to understand that this is what you can do to help educate your friends and help to make sure that, that doesn't come back again right right right, right. okay that's a wonderful insight from all of you guys uh, so one last question what is your message to the healthcare workers regarding this covid pandemic i would say number one Take time, take care of yourself, Mm -hmm. get vaccinated. Also, um, wear your mask. It's a simple thing. It's a simple thing. If we had been wearing our masks, this would have been gone a long time Mm -hmm. ago. And the people that resist, okay, you have a choice. Wear a mask or wear a ventilator. I think Mm. you prefer the mask over the ventilator. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, spot on. on. <laughs> yes, correct. Yeah. I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Right, shall we make that the last word? Mic <laughs> drop. We're a mask. Yeah, mic drop. Drop yeah. the mic. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, I think we all agree with Terry that you know this yes. is the safest way to um, you know to do to. Uh, well, end this pandemic, actually, yes. end this pandemic. I'm with you. So thank you very much to all of you, ladies, yes. Ms. Lauren thank Edgar, you. Dr. Uh, Tracy Johnson Glover. I call you Dr. Tracy. And, <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of words. <laughs> I know. And uh, Terry, Terry Yates, uh, uh, for, thank you for joining us today. You certainly yes. have given us a lot of food for thought about Black History Month and your wonderful organization, the Southern Nevada Black Nurses Association. So if someone wants to join your organization, how can they contact you? Oh, great question. Yeah. <laughs> so what they can do is um, they can go on our website, um, mm-hmm. smbnalv.org, or they mm-hmm. can go um, look, simply e- email us. You'll literally email it directly at us. Yes. You're looking at <laughs> you're looking <laughs> <up> <laughs> so, um, so please, I um, looked you up, and it. I think exactly. we can flash that thing on the, uh, you know, I, I prepared something. I, I think it's uh, the e- email is snbnalv at gmail.com. 
gmail.com. Correct. Yes. At Gmail. Correct. It's a Gmail account. Yes. SMBNALV at gmail.com. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, Thank you again for joining us today. I really thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations again. Oh, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know about that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But anyway, um, and to our listeners, uh, we leave you with this. We are a country of diverse backgrounds and races, and that is beautiful. Still, it is good to be reminded of one's history, one's roots. It reminds us of where we all came from and the work that lies ahead of us to prove that diversity is okay. We all have something to contribute, no matter what color, creed, or race we have. We need to be proud of our respective heritage. And... To quote from the poem, The Hill We Climb, by a young African-American poet laureate, Miss Amanda Gorman. I love this young lady. It says, when day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light, if we only If only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for joining us today. This is Doris Bauer, your Philippine Nurse host, signing off for now. The Philippine Nurses Association of Nevada has just brought you Philippine Nurse, news and features about the Filipino-American nursing community and beyond. Fridays, 7 p.m. on PHLV Radio.